highlights and annotations can document the ideas sparked while you're reading. But refinding those ideas relies on you browsing through that book. And if you part remember a quote or idea that you had, you've got to remember which book you made note of them in. So here we'll go through how you can transfer your physical notes into a digital system on Protolist so that you can view and see those notes and ideas outside of the source and start to organize them around different topics and areas of interest. So on Protolist, we'll make use of our atoms for each of the ideas and notes from within your physical books that you want to add into your system. And so here's a book that I've been reading and taking some notes on. I'm gonna add it into Protolist. So I'm gonna create a new page and leave it as it is, add the title of the book, and then I've got this atom section at the bottom of the page. And to add atoms manually, you can just press this add atoms button and you will get two options to add a new atom or to import atoms from a page. So I'm gonna choose new atom and this will give me the atom box and I can type whatever text or notes I want to into this box. So I can copy the text from the page as well as the annotations that I might have added to it. And don't forget to add the page number. And now the benefit of getting your notes off of a physical page and into a system like this is that you can connect them. So let's start doing that with some tags in the workspace. So above the atom text that I've just added in, there's a bar and a tag has already been added. And this is a link between this atom and this startup to exit source page. And next to it, I can add a new or link a page. So if I click in this box, it will give me a list of all of the pages that are within my workspace. And since this is a brand new workspace, there aren't really any other pages in it. So I'm going to add a new page. And I'm gonna add it into the sidebar. I'm gonna add a topic which is relevant to this atom. And select add page. And you can see that the tag has been added next to this original tag and in the sidebar another page has been added and when you add a tag to an atom it means that your atom will display in each of the pages that it's been tagged to so if i close the box here you can see on this start up exit page in the atom section i've got the atom that i just created and if i go to the team setup page the atom also displays in the atom section of this page so I've got one version of that atom, which is displaying in multiple places in the workspace. And you can add as many tags as you like to connect the atom to all of the relevant topics that you add into your workspace. And so as you add more atoms into your workspace, you'll start to build up a collection of related information from across all the different sources that you've read and added into your system. So you can start to group your atoms uh, otherwise known as your quotes and highlights and annotations from all of the books that you add into the system based on the fact that they are related to the same topic. So you could create several pages for each of the tags or topics that you want to connect your atoms to from the beginning or just like I showed you, you can add new pages as new topics evolve. So let's add a few more atoms and books and topics into this system. Okay, so I've added a few more books in and some atoms for each of those books, added in some connections between those atoms and some other tags. So at this point, we probably wanna tidy up the workspace a little bit by using tables for some of the pages that we've added, which are currently sitting in the sidebar. So I'm gonna add a reading list and a tags table and move the corresponding pages into each of those tables. Those pages have been moved. When we open up the tables, there are three property types that are added by default whenever you create a table. So we've got the name of a page, any sub pages of that page and the atoms of that page. And so where I told you that I had connected different atoms from the books in the reading list to the different topics, which now sit in this tags table, atoms are now displaying next to each of those tag topics. On Protolist, all of your tags are pages. And so by having that table set up, when you want to add links or connections, you can type out topics and within the drop down list, you'll be presented with all of the tags that are within this topics tags table here. So you'll always be able to see all of the tags that have already been created and exist in your workspace so you won't make any duplicates. 
So we could tidy up this table a bit. We could get rid of this sub pages property. But if you wanted to use things like sub tags, that could be useful there. I'll link another video for info on tags and sub tags. And then your atoms property, you can also swap to showing account rather than the text. And if we jump into the reading list table, um, you can obviously customize this to include information about all of your books, such as the author, genre, any kind of properties that you want to add into the table. So you can add new properties using the add property button. I'm gonna swap this to a text property to be our author, add those in. You could also make use of an image property to add the book covers. So to add images, you add the image property and then you use the plus icon in the bottom right of the field and you can insert from URL, upload files from your computer or you can just paste if you're using a screenshot tool or have copied an image straight in there and it will load in. And so once you've added images, you can set up a gallery view of your table. And within gallery view, you can edit the properties so that we can have a slightly larger image displaying for each of the books. In this properties menu, you can turn on and off the different properties of the table to display in these cards in the gallery view. And just like before, we could swap the atoms to show a count rather than list of all the atoms. So there's another table view that you can use to organize your reading list that would be able to show you a summary that you might have written about the book so you don't have to open up each page to crank through and remind yourself what's in each of the books. So if I've set this up as a vertical view, view we've got the reading list and the titles of all the books here. So if I go back to the properties and turn on the author, and we could also have cover, we'll turn that one off. Atoms are still on count. Uh, there's this option display page preview and what that will do is if we open up the atomic habits page when we created this we set it up as an undefined page um, which meant that we added in all of the atoms down here what we can now do is set it up as a text editor page you could add in a summary here and you could even drag and drop the quotes that you have collected from a book into this summary. So if we open up the atoms menu using this button at the top right, a list of all of the atoms that we've added into the workspace for Atomic Habits will display here. So you can drag and drop them into the page and then you will have them embedded with a link. So if you were to use these quotes in another page within your workspace, you'll always be able to jump back to the source, in this case, the Atomic Habits page. So if I just take a moment to write a summary for each of the books, you'll see what I'm talking about. And so now that I've gone through and set up each of these book pages as a text editor page and added in a brief summary as to what each book is about in this vertical view, where I've got the display page preview toggled on, you can see that my summary in that page is displaying. So you'd be able to browse through in a linear fashion, all of the books that are within your table and see the summaries without needing to open up any of your pages. And so that's a bit of an overview as to how you can start to organize your book notes in Protolist.